Um, I read this the other day and I want to share it here because um, I, I think it was really well written. Um, so this is for from Good Food Jobs. Today's newsletter was written by a college dropout and a culinary school graduate. Our guest columnist is a former cook, baker, chef, and sales manager. Um, Harlem born and East Coast bred, she now lives in Chicago with two quadrupeds. I don't know what a quadruped is. An ever expanding headphone collection and is open to new job opportunities. On paper, I'm a success story. I work for a multi-million dollar company and have a job title that commands respect. I dropped out of high school, got my GED and went to college. Then I dropped out of college and I went to culinary school. During my culinary career, I worked for some truly talented, inspiring and renowned chefs. I even had my own food business for a while. When I changed careers, I found a job that I loved, an absolute dream job. I was happy. But I was still, and I was raised to never be stoned. I was taught to always look for a job, even when you have a job that you love. That is a weird teaching that is happening. There's always an opportunity waiting for you, and if you don't search for them, how will you know what you're missing? So I applied for a job that I was barely qualified for. I'd read somewhere that men apply for jobs when they're only 60% qualified, but women only apply for a job if they meet the qualifications 100%. I took a chance, applied, and was absolutely surprised when I got an interview. I showed up to that interview wearing professional clothes, but made sure that I showed off the majority of my tattoos. I wore a scarf on my head and kept my nose piercings in. I wasn't going to get the job anyway, I reasoned, so why not be myself? That's a whole way to feel. 20 minutes after I left the interview, I got a call and I was offered the job. I was moving up. That's, where, that's what we're supposed to do, right? Hustle and grind. As a woman, I'm supposed to make my way up the ladder and smash the glass ceiling. As a black woman, the ancestors tell me that every step I take, I'm bringing them with me. They remind me that it's my responsibility to wedge that door open for the next black woman. That's another thing that's hard, which I feel like there is not really a black community. So holding the door open for another black woman, I think is bullshit. What I do think you can do is just live as a human in the world as a black woman and just try to be as ethical as you can be. But there can't be some expectation that like you're going to improve, do improve some shit for the next generation. Improve some shit for yourself. You know, <laughs> like that's another thing I think is so weird. Everybody says things like, oh, like hold the door open, the thumbtack shit. Like if you can't fix it for yourself, you certainly cannot fix it for someone else. <laughs> it's like black dear black women eat your breakfast first and then talk about compassion to help the motherfuckers in africa like i'm not i'm not even saying it like in a joke way but like feed yourself first like they tell you on the airplane like put the oxygen mask over yourself first and then start talking about somebody else like this is what i'm i can't care about white women's problems i got black women's problems like what <laughs> I don't have time to care about trans people. I got my own fucking problems. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't... This is ridiculous. Um, as blah, blah, blah. I'm bringing... They remind me that it's my responsibility to wedge that door. Uh, whatever. So I worked hard. I took online instruction to make me more valuable to my employers. I worked late, worked weekends, and responded to emails with a rapid rate unmatched by anyone else at the company. I did this for years and for several different companies. Then came March of 2020. I came back from a trade show and days later, my city was shut down due to the pandemic. Uh, the office was open though, so I went to work. Breonna Taylor was murdered. I went to work. COVID came rampaging through the company. I went to work. Damn. 
George Floyd was murdered and I went to work. I was stopped by cops, intimidated, yelled at, followed by weird pickup trucks without identifying plates, and I still went to work. I mean, <laughs> that, I, I could make that into like a Kerry Washington skit. Like, just the unreasonable amount of burden that black women are expected to tolerate. That's like, listen to this shit, like, <laughs> then came March of 2020. I came back from a trade show and days later, my city was shut down due to the pandemic. The office was open though, so I went to work. Breonna Taylor was murdered. I went to work. COVID came rampaging through the company. I went to work. George Floyd was murdered. I went to work. I was stopped by cops, intimidated, yelled at, followed by weird pickup trucks without identifying plates. And I still went to work. I tried to help others. I, how? Bitch, how are you helping other people? You, you, you are not in a space where you can help. Like, this is a part where like, um, how grounding techniques are important. You gotta get to a place where you realize your, your own situation and limitations. Like, this bitch is out of touch. How are you experiencing all that talking about you still went to work? Bitch, stop going to work. Like, you're not gonna make it to work. <laughs> it's kind of like somebody's trying to snatch her up when like she's being followed by cars. I was, it, sometimes you gotta say, I, I, can't, I can't make it to work. I gathered donations from friends near and far and sent them to community organizations who were already doing the mutual aid work. I was spreading myself too thin, you think? What? I wasn't sleeping and when I did, I was having nightmares. I'm sure. Her life sounds like a night terror, a day terror, shit. Um, my hair started falling out. I was in serious decline and needed to make a change. I asked for a few days off. My boss said no. <laughs> I asked to work from home. My boss said no. I had worked so hard, had gone above and beyond, and it didn't matter. None of it mattered. So I started thinking about looking for a new job. My immediate instinct was to look for a position that would bring me a step higher on the ladder or at the very least find a lateral move with exquisite benefits every time i found something that looked promising i would psych myself out of it i started looking for the job that i was 100 percent qualified for and if i wasn't able to tick all of the boxes i didn't apply one day i went home and i cried i couldn't understand why i wasn't able to find a job I started internalizing and thinking I wasn't good enough. I considered going back to college to get my bachelor's degree, and then I could go on to grad school, and then and then and then. I was exhausted just thinking about it. I went to sleep crying. A month or so later, I started writing down what I wanted in a job. So I wrote down what the minimum income was that I would need to have to live in a roommate-free apartment while continuing to pay off my 10 year old car and keeping the cats in the finest kibble Petco can offer. <laughs> this sounds like a George Orwell story. It sounds so hard. I'm sorry, I'm like, no. Uh, mm, no. Then I started writing down what my skills are. That was hard. Being honest about what I can do well what I do okay-ish and what I absolutely shouldn't put, my, put on my resume was incredibly hard. I have a lot of skills. Growing up, my grandmother told me about the saying, jack of all trades, but master of none. She said that there's more to the saying. The complete saying is, jack of all trades, a master of none, but oftentimes better than master of one. So that's how I've treated my career path ready and willing to learn the next thing. It's one of the reasons I've been able to get to where I am. Why wear one hat at work when I can wear four? What? How do I pick which skills to focus on? 
how do I decide which path to take? I am filled with doubt and dread. Choosing to step off the ladder and do what brings me joy and fulfillment is terrifying. What if I miss working on a corporate structure? What if I fail? On the other hand, what if I find joy and purpose and succeed on a different scale? A scale that doesn't involve ladders and ceilings and impressive titles. What if I take this leap and find a more honest and joyful me on the other side? Is it worth the risk? I think it is. I'm ready. I deserve this. Mm. I'm sorry that if that doesn't sound dreadful to you, then I feel like your struggle has been full of trauma porn and I'm so sorry. That sounds like a miserable fucking existence. Like she should really take a break. That bitch needs a break. Like she, black women deserve a break. Give black women a break. Like shit. The work part was so, it was like, I'm dying. I'm on chemotherapy. I went to work. Like really? Like fuck. Like it's just. <laughs> Like, it's like that fucking show, the show with the maid. I'm sorry, the maid show looks so awful. I mean, this bitch is like cleaning toilets for a sick child. Just give the child up. Sometimes the orphanage is just better, okay? Like, orphanages are there to provide support when you cannot financially take care of a child. <laughs> And this bitch can't even take care of herself. She is not in a position where she can take care of a child. Like, this is so awful. Oh, Jesus. Like, it's just so... It's all just so awful. I don't even... I don't even know. It's just ridiculous. Like, it's just... Oh. 